Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today I was requested to uh, explain the morphological features of LSIL and HSIL, uh, that is low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion and high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion of cervix. Uh, so I just thought this would be the, the this would be the best or the most appropriate way to explain under the current circumstances. Now. Uh, we first move on to the normal histology of the ecto cervix. We will be talking about the ecto cervix, not the endo cervix. So this is the normal morphology. You can see the cells at the surface here, and these are the cells in the basal layers. So the cells in the surface layers, if you notice closely, the nuclei are fairly round in shape small pointy kind of nuclei there's a lot of space around them uh, clear space and the most important thing to remember is that these nuclei they do not show any features of dysplasia or atypia we usually talk about in the practicals now these are fairly round nuclei you can see this cell you can see this cell this cell so these, uh, the nuclei in these cells are almost in the central portions of the cells and they're round, they are not hyperchromatic, they do not show any features of tipia or dysplasia and this is a fairly fine regular basal layer. Now as we move on to these photomicrographs, this one is the normal one for comparison and this one here is the abnormal one now the change we most clearly see from normal hair to abnormal hair is that the nuclei have increased in size and the nuclei have become darkened they have become hyperchromatic and if you look more closely some of the nuclei like this one like this one like this one they've got they've got some irregular contours they're not that round in comparison to the nuclei we saw in the uh, normal ectocervix. So these are abnormal cells now and most of the abnormal cells are located in the upper or the superficial one-third of the ectocervix. So the changes that have occurred are that the nuclei have increased in size, they've darkened, they've become hyperchromatic and the, nu the nuclear contours have become irregular. Some of the cells may also show binucleation as well. And when that binucleation occurs, and with that binucleation, their surrounding clear clearing, we call that change as coelocytic change or coelocytic atypia, which is very important part of the diagnosis of H, uh, these squamous intraepithelial lesions of the ectocervix. Now, these changes, as I said, are mostly seen in the superficial one third. And this region is termed as LSIL, the low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or SIN1. Now, as the changes progress, they're termed HSIL. And the basic thing to remember when we say the word progression here is you can see the changes have gone towards the basal portion, towards the mid portion in this photomicrograph. And the changes of atypia, dysplasia, all those features, nuclear enlargement, hyperchromasia have gone down to the basal layer as well as can be seen here. 
So in this photomicrograph, the changes involve the full thickness of the ectocervix. There are mitotic figures as well. One of them visible here, these thread-like structures you can see. <clears throat> so this is termed as sin-free. This one is termed sin-2 and they are uh, part of the HSIL spectrum, both of them. So generally, they've simplified it now. Previously, they used to call, they used to write sin 1, 2, and 3. Now, uh, they say it's better to write it this way, LSIL or HSIL. HSIL, uh, changes of HSIL are synonymous with sin 2 and sin 3. Cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, sin, okay? So here, the changes are about involve about two thirds or a bit more of the ectocervix and here changes have involved the full thickness. Now here you can see the nuclei have increased to such a size that the cytoplasm is minimal. So this is so we say that in HSIL nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio also increases. The nuclear size also increases in LSIL, but not to the extent uh, that the cytoplasm gets minimal. In LSIL, the there is still some amount of cytoplasm, but here in HSIL, the cytoplasm is very minimum, minimal. You can see here, and you can see in the abnormal cells here. You can see the, the pleomorphism as well. You can see this cell. You can compare these two nuclei from each other as well. So these are the uh, uh, basic changes that occur. Now, next part of the question was that what are these? These are the images of cytology, pap smear, which is a fairly routine procedure done by the gynecologists now. Um, this, these cells are squamous cells. Okay, these have been sampled and these are normal and why we say these are normal there is um, the nuclei you can see in almost all of them are fairly regular round in almost all of them not all of them but this one this one this one fairly round there's a large amount of cytoplasm that is clearly visible but as we move on to this photomicrograph here, you can clearly see the changes which we have described for LSIL in um, uh, histology images, the HNE images, uh, a few minutes ago. Now you can see here the nucleus has increased in size in comparison to the normal one. There is lesser amount of cytoplasm in comparison to normal. Same is the case with this cell, this cell, this cell. Okay. Now, these, the, the changes of atypia we described have increased in these images. You can see here, in this one, the nucleus shows irregular nuclear contours as well. You can see there are, there's this clear cut irregularity uh, visible and here in this picture you can see the nuclei have increased to such sizes that again the cytoplasm is very minimal so again there is hypochromasia, nuclear irregularities, um, all the changes of HSIL that is high grade squamous intrapicular lesion. Now um, Please let me know if you have any more questions regarding this. Um, this video has been designed to cater for to cater for the needs of um, undergraduate students. I hope uh, this video has served the purpose. 
So this is it for now. Signing out. Thanks a lot.